Okay. Good evening, everyone. So happy Thursday, and hope you all are doing great. So I'm assuming that uh, you've installed Photoshop on your systems and started practicing. So guys, just remember one thing I'm telling you once again. So it's only practice that can take you to the next level. So keep practicing. Please install Photoshop. Any version, if you have a 30-day free trial. So please install and start uh, practicing once we finish the session. So now, uh, before we start today's session, so let's just recap. So what we have done yesterday, a, a, a quick re recap can help you, like, you know, get the things back in your brain. So we have learned how to open different documents in Photoshop parallelly. And then we have learned, we have understood actually how to move different documents into one single document and using like different layers with the move tool. Then we have learned deeply on how to modify the layers. So we have just played around the layers. And then we have covered on how to blend two layers. And then we have understood how to use the opacity tool and different options of that particular tool. We have understood like how to see through each layer. Then we have moved to the selection tools in detail. That is like mark you tool, lasso tool, quick select, and then magic wand tool. And then mark you tool, we have co covered like four options. If you remember, one is like rectangular mark you, ellipt elliptical mark you, single row mark you, and then single column mark you. And then lasso tool, again, we have covered three options. One is like a regular lasso tool used for the curved images, polygon lasso tool for straight and rectangular images, and then magnetic lasso. So it selects everything within the range of the cursor. Then we have moved to the selection tools. Uh, one is the quick select tool, which selects everything within the cursor range, and then magic wand tool selects the background based on the tolerance level. So we. Uh, we have also learned how to use the shortcuts like Control D, usage of Shift keys, and then Alt keys. Now, we have also introduced the manipulation tools, and then I think we have started with the crop tool. But uh, let's learn more about these tools in today's session, and we'll start with the crop tool again. So we'll start it from the basics. Okay. So now in today's session, here is what we are going to cover. We will understand the manipulation tools, crop tool. Crop tool guide, slice tool, slice select tool, spot healing brush tool, healing brush tool, patch tool, red eye tool, clone stamp tool, and pattern stamp tool. We'll understand each and every manipulation tool in detail. Okay. So let's open the Photoshop. So in our previous class, we have learned to select specific areas of an image, isolating the pixels, right? So that we can, you know, so that the, the, the isolated picture can be manipulated without affecting the rest of image. We don't have to select the entire image to uh, you know, manipulate. If you want to just uh, manipulate a portion of an image, you can just select that using the select tool and then we can manipulate it. Now that we know how to select the layers content, we will now go to the tools to manipulate those contents. So let's get started with it. I will upload an image out here in the Photoshop. I can either go to file and then open or I can directly say control O. And let me take an example of this building. It's getting loaded. Yes, this is done. Just moving my layer out here. So I'm selecting my crop tool. So the first manipulation tool here we have is the crop tool right below this quick select and the magic wand tool. So when we select this crop tool around the image, so I'm just saying none for now. I'll just help you understand like what these are. For now, I'm, I've just selected none. So this is the crop tool. So my entire image is like now cropped. So a box around the image appears. So as we have uh, no, discussed yesterday, the cursor changes to double arrow when I just you know click on the edge of my image. You can see the cursor change out here. 
So whenever you click on an image, it is like a pointer whenever you are on the border. So the, the, the cursor actually changes to the two pointers. So you can drag the image. So I've dragged the image. So you can see the image out here, the other building is like now cut. So whenever I drag, so everything is like, you know, going off and I see a normal background out here. So my image is like gone. So the, the content is like completely hidden. So new dimensions remain in my original image. So this is a new dimensional image. So here my original content is like gone. So now I will press enter key. When I press enter key, my original image is like gone and whatever I have cropped has come out now. So what if I want to go back to my original image? For that, I have this history tab. So this history tab is actually very, very important. So this is really useful as it lists down the most recent changes. What if your undo tab doesn't work? So whenever you want to undo something, you will just say control Z or control alt Z. Whenever this function doesn't work, this history tab is really, it really actually helps you. So it, it makes your job very simpler. So if you want to put this tab on your workspace, you just have to go to window and then make sure this history tab is like checked. Whenever it is checked, you will have this history tab. So I think there's a lot more to learn about this tab. Probably we'll take it in the further sessions. You have a lot many users with it. Now, let's go back and hit on the crop tool again. So I'm just cropping my entire image or I can directly say C. C the shortcut in the keyboard is for the crop tool. Now, I'll click on the canvas and the double arrow indicates, see, when I click on the canvas, my double arrow actually indicates to rotate the canvas in the angle I want. And yesterday, I think we have covered this part. So we have stopped it. So this double arrow will help me to rotate my canvas in whichever direction I want to. If I want to rotate this particular image in a selective direction, in a right direction, in an angular direction, then I will have to press and hold shift key. Shift key, you will find it in your keyboard. So just press the shift key and then just try to rotate the image. So it will get rotated in the angle you want to. Just cropping it again for you. So what this shift key does is, it will help you to constrain your rotation with 15 degrees. Let's say you just want to rotate your picture in like 30 degrees or 45 degrees or 90 degrees or 60 degrees. You can press hold of this shift key. And now if you want to cancel the selection, what you have to do is, this is the one. So when you click, on the option above uh, your toolbar or above your workspace. So everything will be gone and your original image will be like restored. So whenever you make a selection, you will find these options on top. One is for enter and one is like cancel. So whenever you're done with your uh, selection and whenever you're done with the cropping, and if you want to save that particular image, then you will have to click on this tick tab. Whenever you, whenever you want to cancel everything and get back to the normal one, you will have to enter the cancel thing. Now, we'll discuss another option of this crop tool, which is crop guide. Okay, this is the crop guide, crop uh, guide overlay. So, uh, I use CS5, okay, uh, Creative Suite file. Hence, I have this option on the top. So, whoever is using CC, so mine is CS5, so whoever is using CC, which is Creative Cloud, any version of Creative Cloud will have an, another option out here below the crop tool and above the slice tool, okay, which uh, reads as perspective crop tool, which is called perspective crop tool. So this is like quite interesting thing. So instead of just changing the width and the you know height or rotation of this, 
this option, this particular option, the crop guide overlay or perspective crop tool changes the perspective of the whole canvas. Let us now set, now I've uh, set it to none. Let's say rule of thirds. So it makes the canvas into three by three grid. So it is like nine boxes. So how much ever big the canvas is, it makes into three by three grid. The entire image will be selected in nine boxes. So these such a huge pixel. So in this box, we have a lot of pixels. And in this box, we have a lot of pixels. So the entire image is like selected in three by three grid. Okay. Now each selection is made into large pixels. You can now rotate it, shrink it. You can do whatever you want to do. Whenever you are done with the selection, whenever you are like, you know, uh, happy enough with this particular cropping, you can just hit the stick button or you can enter, you can hit on the enter tab on your keyboard. You can do the either ways. Okay, but it only selects the image which is there in the crop zone and it stretches as the input is given by us. Now, I'm just saying cancel. I'll just show you another grid tool option. Now, I'll say grid. So this grid will divide the entire image into small grids. Okay, the pixels are now divided differently. So you can actually use this grid if you want detailing of the picture. This is actually very, you know, a smaller, these, this particular option has smaller grids when compared to this particular rule of third grid. So this has three by three grids and it has like more smaller grids when compared to that. Okay. If you have like, if you want like more detailing in the picture, you can use this grid. Let's say if you're designing or holding for a construction company. So, and uh, you want to like showcase a building that they're constructing in different angles. So you can actually use this grid. You can actually crop the image that you want to. Let's say I want to showcase it like this. And I'm done. So now I'll say commit. So it's cropping, it's in process. Now see. The entire thing has been cropped and it has been changed to the angle that I wanted to. So whenever we are like designing, it, it, it generally happens with all the companies, but basically the construction companies more often use this kind of imaging. So if whenever they are like designing some flyers or whenever they are designing some holdings, they just, you know, change the angle of the picture and then uh, beside that, they try to put up the text. So we can actually showcase a building in different dimensions. I'll just show you an example that I have. Though this picture is a 2D picture, so they'll actually rotate it using this crop tool and they use some crop tools. So they rotate this picture. This is, a, of course, a 2D picture. We'll learn about it later, but this is how it actually looks when you rotate it. So this is just to give you a rough idea. Now we are going back here. So I'm just saying cancel, saying escape, and I'm deleting this for now. Good. So we are back to the normal workspace. So the next manipulation tool out here is the slice tool. Okay. I will take another image for you to better understand how it works. So I'm just saying control O. I'm just taking this picture. Okay, this is the one. So this tool, the slice tool, it's called slice tool. It's, it's like self-explanatory. Slicing is like dividing the big image into the smaller images. It is mainly used in the web design to slice an image into multiple image and assign a button which is clickable on each image. So if you just imagine a web page, just just um, just you know take this as a web page. For an example, Amazon. You have like different products. What if you want to make each section separate and clickable? So when I click on this picture, it will take me to a particular landing page. 
and when i click on this particular picture it will take me to another dedicated landing page right so for web designing purpose this particular slice tool is like more of thinly used so whenever uh, whenever you're giving a work to a designer you will have to specify him for what you are making him design a particular image so if you tell him if you tell the designer that you want an image for a web page or a web banner or an email newsletter which should be in clickable when it is clickable it should be in a html format when it should when a design should be in an html format it should definitely be sliced into rectangular or a square boxes that is when you can code it in html and put some clickable buttons so you have a different tool wherein you can put this sliced image and that tool will give you the html of the sliced image so generally develop uh, developers and designers do the same process so this particular image is like perfect to demonstrate this tool because it has plenty of open space for us to slice now i'll select the first girl and draw a rectangular box around her so here we go so this is how i have drawn a rectangular box around her now so photoshop automatically gives her a number one okay when we use the slice tool we should make make sure it you know corners the entire surface so i have you know used the entire surface beside her and then i have put a rectangular box now what if i want to use slice another one so the girl right beside her i want to slice this particular image so i can slice it up so in a uh, slicing tool there is always one particular point to remember that you should never give any space between two slices because this image this portion will get unassigned so you have an option here so you can drag it and then make sure they both snap to each other okay using these dots i can actually drag so now it it is not necessary that you know just because i have drawn up such a big rectangular box i also have to draw same boxes to the below ones or the beside ones so i have an option wherein control z so i'm slicing up this boy i can use whatever size i want to so i'm also slicing up this girl so i'm again slicing up this little girl slicing up this girl okay now i need it, it, there's like no uh, you know particular rule that i will have to maintain the same rectangular size boxes so every girl is given the number now if you notice my here just because i am in this particular section i have an option to drag it out but for this my slicing is already done i don't have any pointer even if i click on this particular image i don't see the dots to make sure i i but i i actually drag this to this particular six image okay so now what we will have to do so here we come to the next option which is slice select tool so whenever you forget to uh, you know map both the pictures the slice you can go here right click on this and select slice select tool click here the dots appears you can actually clone it with the beside image so this is done so to whichever image you want to clone you can just click on that so the dots appears as usual so you can drag it up and then mix it with the line of the beside image so this is how you can slice slice it up so now we have like six slices so now this is called as a web ready page how do you go and save it so now we'll go to file and then say save for web and devices or the shortcut is alt shift control and s so this particular image 
will be saved for the web pages. So we have a lot of options here. It's, it's a very extensive dialog box, but we are not going deep into it. Uh, but uh, this is just to give you an idea of what sort of support Photoshop gives for web pages. Okay, for now, I'm canceling this. There's a lot actually you can do with the Photoshop for web. So once this is like done, you can save it for web and then you have a tool in Photoshop itself, sorry, in Adobe Suite itself, which is called Adobe Dream Viewer. And then you can upload this and that particular tool will give you the HTML of, of this document. So for now, I'm just canceling this and I'm just closing the document. Now, we'll get into something which is like, more fun. I will now upload an another image for you to understand the next options, which is like spot healing brush tool. Okay, I'll again say control O. I will go to a picture. Yes, here we go. So this is the picture that I have uploaded now. So here we can see a woman. Uh, she looks as if she's getting her surgical procedure done. So doctor has drawn something on her eyes. Now, she has some marks on her face. So she's asking us to remove it. So how do we do that? So the great way to remove these marks is using spot healing brush tool. So here we go, here the spot healing brush tool. This is just a brush tool which will remove everything out here. All that you will have to do is right click here, select this tool, and then click on the spots, and then release the mouse. So everything is like gone. So what's happening here basically is it's not a magic, but Photoshop is using its best guess as what I want to remove on this face. And it's sampling another area of the image to cover it. What sampling? So sampling is nothing but picking up some other color beside that face and then it is covering it up on the marks. So it's, it's kind of an artificial intelligence that you know our great Photoshop has. Now this, this tool is actually great for you know editing some minor details but if you get little carried away so Photoshop doesn't know what to correct and what not to. Okay so you have to be careful with this so hence we use this tool only for the areas we want to delete. For an example, this is the image that I want to delete. So it got deleted. But what if by mistake, I have chose to delete this eyebrow. So the eyebrow got deleted. So Photoshop actually doesn't know like uh, what to, what to like, uh, put and what not to. So hence, this tool is only used, this particular spot healing brush tool is only used to you know, delete some minor changes. Here, you can also uh, select the cursor type as well. So right now, my size is 19. You can also increase the size or decrease the size based on the uh, you know, image or the marks you have. I'm replacing it with 19. Okay. Now, the next set of tool, which is healing brush tool, this tool works similar to the spot healing brush tool. So let's select healing brush tool. For this tool to work, first we will have to give a sample. We have to first pick up a sample and then press Alt. Okay, for an example, no, I've selected this and I have to click a sample. Sample in the sense, the area which is like neat and clean. I want even this eye to be as neat as this eye. So I just pick a sample. So uh, even this color tone is same out here. So I can do this. So my cursor changes as soon as I press Alt. I'm sure you're able to see the screen. My cursor changes as soon as I press the Alt and I'm just clicking with the mouse. So my sample has been picked. Okay, now I can, Photoshop helps us to remove the marks by using the sample. So I'm just clicking on it. So the, the you know thing got erased. So it takes a sample 
and uh, it it you know covers the entire portion that we want to remove but we have to be very clever when we use the sample because if a wrong sample has been picked if 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 a sample if if i pick sample from here the entire color tone of this woman changes and it really looks gibberish so you have to be very careful when you pick up the sample so another tool out here is the patch tool yes so here is the patch tool you know this tool actually gives gives you a bit more freedom for what we want to specifically copy so it actually helps us to copy like whatever portion we want to so let's make a selection here which is actually similar to a lasso tool probably i just want to select this particular eyebrow let's say if i the side brow is a mark that she don't want it on her face you can actually move it so the entire section the eyebrow got moved and whatever color tone is there below that particular area has been replaced with the eyebrow so you don't actually find a much of difference here if you notice so the color tone has been changed okay let's take another example let's say if i want to select these lips and move so the color tone which is just right below it has been replaced i don't see an empty section out here i don't see a hole out here so it actually nicely covers it up with the section or the color tone which is beside it okay now for th this is how this works and now i'll go to the red eye tool for me i would uh, for me to help you understand how it works i'll probably pick another image i'll just close it up i'll pick another image i'll just say control o i will pick another image yes here we go so i'm sure you've noticed this red eye in many pictures in your lifetime right so this red eye is an unfortunate consequence when someone is looking into the camera lens directly as the camera flash goes off whenever you uh, look into the lens and whenever within this like fraction of second when the flash on and when it just goes off if you are still looking into the lens this particular red eye appears so i'm i'm sure we have like experienced this many times whenever you know our family or friends take picture of us we find this red eye on our uh, face uh, especially in our eyes so more often and then we say you know what this picture is really good but you know can you take another picture because this picture has a red eye on my eyes so you know after learning this you really don't have to take uh, another picture because whatever picture is taken and if it has got the red eye and if you really like the picture you can directly go and then remove the red eye it's really 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 simple you don't have to be an expert to do that now this generally actually happens in an environment this red eye thing happens when there is a dim lighting and you know the cameras which have flash are located very close to the lens of your eyes you know basically the flash is like bouncing off his uh, you know redness of lens you know our eyes redness it it just bounces off to reflect right back on the lens so which results in this red marks so fortunately thank god photoshop actually provides fast and easy way to fix this up okay and as i've told you this is one of the easiest tool in photoshop now just right click select this red i tool you can also have this shortcut j now click on the area where you find the redness gone i'm clicking on another eye it's gone right so this picture looks much better now it's it's, it's very decent and it's very straight okay much better really okay now but again don't you think the image is like you no know, not perfect probably there's something you know which is really not pleasing to the eyes can you just tell me what is it okay you will probably i'm just zooming it for you you will have a better view of it 
yeah if you really notice keenly this man has got you know good hair good facial hair but his beard is like patchy in some areas okay these small patches are bringing down his entire look so when you are you know dealing with photos or when you're dealing with editing the photos you will have to be very particular you will have to notice each and every detail of this particular man so you can also like remove her wrinkles from his eyes you can you know put hair to his bald head you can remove the wrinkles from his neck you can do everything possible so the detailing is like very 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 important so when you just you know notice properly his beard has got some absurd patches so how do we deal with this now i will now go to the next manipulation tool so for now i'm just skipping this brushes so we'll cover this in the later session and now i'm going to the manipulation tool called clone stamp okay this clone stamp tool functions similar way to healing brush tool but without any automated features it it doesn't know what exactly to remove or what exactly to add like our previous tools okay so instead clone stamp tool produces an exact duplicate of your sample so whatever you select it will just you know have the exact sample out there so in order to fill this empty patches with hair, without hair so the, these empty patches so i'll press and hold the alt key so i'll just press and hold the alt key i'm just taking the sample i'm just stamping it out and then see whenever i move the cursor i have this particular stamp created so i have just picked up a particular area which is like with good hair and then i want to just print it out here okay the stamp actually does that right it actually you know takes up something from one you know uh, object it actually prints out to the another thing so i have just you know pressed on alt now the my my cursor actually changes so i have this on my keyboard i have clicked on the beard i press on alt i click on the beard area to set my sample so i have set my sample here by clicking on alt now i will slowly release the alt so i have this carrying with me so uh, my 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 cursor has this and now i'll click on the so i'm done with the sampling and i'll i'll just click on the patch area so the patch has been filled with the sample which is just right beside it so you make sure you pick the sample just beside whatever is empty Okay, whenever you pick sample from here and then put it here, I'm sure it doesn't match. So you have to be very, very careful when you're picking up the stamp. Now, so this is you know uh, th this particular stamp tool, this first tool actually works like an exact duplicate of whatever I have taken, as I've told you. Now I can go and then brush in the areas that I want to. Now, how does this pattern sample tool work? We'll go here. So I I just want you to remember one thing: the sample point is coming from an exact copy of the entire image, right? So if I go too far with it, I will get a patchy area. I wanted to remove in the first place. Now, so what if we want to replicate a specific? area without repeating the pattern so now every time when i use this particular clone stamp tool i just have to click on alt take the sample and then clear it of the patches now what if i want to take a particular area and then copy the duplicate of it how do i do that so you know this leads us to the next tool which is this particular pattern stamp tool i've selected it now this pattern sample tool takes one of your existing set patterns and allow you to paint it in okay so how do you do that now we observe on the top options here we go so we have this two options available for us these are available by default now we want uh, a pattern of the beard 
here. So all that we are trying to do is like cut a beard and then put it in the empty space for that. I'm just typing Control Z for me to clear off the beard. So if you see the history tab is like going up, I want all the patches back. Here we go. Okay, my patches are back. Now I want to stamp it out. I want the beard to get stamped. Here I'm open, opening a pattern picker. I have two default options. I don't have a beard option out here. Now, so what we will have to do is create our own pattern and add it out. So we will go to our toolbar now. Let's see if I have by mistakenly selected something out here. So it just got reflected. I'm again saying control Z. It's gone. Now we'll go to the toolbar and we'll go to the rectangular marquee tool. I'm sure you remember this tool. We have covered this in the yesterday's session. So I'm just taking one sample of it. So I've just taken this particular sample. So this is what this pattern is what I wanted to paste in all the patchy area. This, this is a good area. Now I've selected this. So I'll just go to edit. Now that I've selected, I'll just go to edit. And then I'll just say define pattern. So this is what the pattern I've selected. So I'm just repeating this once again, just saying control Z, my patches are back. I'll just have to go to the rectangular marquee tool. I'll just have to select a particular area which I want to copy to the entire or probably to, towards the patchy sections. I've copied it. I have enough. So these, these pixels, so I, I'll just go to edit and then I'll say define pattern. So it will ask me to rename it. So I'll say beard and I'll click on OK. It gets saved now. Now, before going forward, now I will have to deselect this area, else nothing would happen. So, for deselecting, I'm sure you remember this option of Control D. Control D is like deselect option. So, I have done that. Now, we'll go back to the pattern stamp tool. Here we go, right click on it, select the pattern stamp tool or the, con the shortcut for this tool is yes. Okay, select it. Now we have selected it, I'm just going to the top. So my pattern of beard is like ready out here. So I'm just, you know, clicking on this particular beard. So I've just selected. If you just mouse over on this particular thing, it says 30 pixels RGB mode. So 33 by 30, 30 pixels is what I've selected. It will also give you the number of pixels. So I have selected this particular pattern. Now I can actually go to the patchy area and then I can click here. So all that I'll have to do is like go to pattern stamp tool. Now go to the beard. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, sorry for that. So all that you will have to do is select the clone stamp tool, pattern, click here, select this pattern and then just click it up. So you will have these patches cleared. Now I'm like overdoing it, right? It is actually visible that I'm overdoing it. Okay. So whenever we are using this pattern stamp tool, it doesn't function like healing brush tool. So it is merely allowing us to define the pattern as a brush. If you keep brushing, it will make edges of the pattern very visible. So 
I can actually see right boxes out here, so it is like really visible. Whatever pattern I've selected, the uh, the the edges are like really visible. So it it doesn't look natural. So this tool, so using this tool under all circumstances might not be like effective. So make sure whenever you require, you use this tool. So that's it for today, guys. So now I'll I'll just give you a brief of like you know what we have learned so far i'm just going back to my ppt so we have learned about the manipulation tool crop tools slice tool slice select tool spot healing tool healing brush tool patch tool red eye tool clone stamp tool and pattern stamp tool i request you all to use the images you know wherever necessary pick up from unsplash or some other website which is like royalty free and then please uh, you know start uh, practicing the session so yeah tomorrow we'll learn more about the manipulation tool and also one of the important options i can say or probably a tab which is more important which is like history the the tab we'll learn more about it tomorrow now i'm sure you you know enjoyed learning new things on today's session so we'll meet tomorrow guys thank you